Hello everybody, welcome to Eternal Brews. My name is Pojo, and today we have a deck list of degeneracy for you. Uh, we are playing Bad Influence, a Aurelian Martyr's Chains deck that, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's actually it. That's, that, that's all it is. Uh, <laughs> um, so the basic idea behind this deck is that we are a Time Primal Shadow deck that is going to surprise people pretty constantly with Martyr's Chains. We're trying to do it reliably basically every single game, and actually it generally succeeds to do it every single game. Uh, Martyr's Chains, as you may or may not know, is a disgusting top-end relic. It is extremely powerful. It has a very strong empower ability. The double ability is extremely strong as well and uh i have complained about this card quite a bit just because i think that in terms of like uh, control setups there's just not much else to do beyond martyr's chains because it does so much uh so quickly as far as like an eight cost card goes it kind of makes other control strategies a little bit more unpleasant because you can't really out uh, top end martyr's chains it's just too much stuff so you have to either kill it immediately or in some way like get through and deal damage and kill the person who's wearing the martyr's chains both of which are strategies that i find less interesting than playing control on control so you know this is a card that i would like to at some point just break so that they maybe nerf it <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this was the first major attempt at uh, trying that out. Uh, we saw somebody playing a version of this list a little previously, and I was thinking that I had a lot of interesting ideas on how to make it work. So here it is. Let's talk about all of the cards in the deck and what specifically we're trying to do. So, first things first, the key card in this deck is Governor Sahin. It is a 4 cost 3 4 that says once per turn you may pay 3 to and sacrifice a relic to play the top relic of your deck. So, if you are playing a deck with no relics in it that somehow creates relics or takes relics out of the market, you can then use Sahin to pay 3, sack a relic, and immediately play Martyr's Chains, the only relic in the deck. Uh, so, there's a couple different ways to accomplish this. The main one that we have here is that we are running 10 different merchants, and each of these merchants can fetch a card called Eternity Core. With Eternity Core, we play Eternity Core on four after playing a merchant on three, and then after that we should have seven power on turn five, at which point we play out Governor Sahin, we sack the Eternity Core, we play Martyr's Chains, and then if we have power, we play power and we empower and knock everything out. We get a six, uh, eight Governor Sahin at the end of turn, we kill something on our opponent's board, and then our board gets steadily more crazy as time goes on. Uh, this deck is pretty consistently capable of accomplishing that, however, getting Sahin is generally the tough part. If you want to play this deck, you probably need to mulligan pretty heavily for Sahin. Uh, we do use some cards such as Strategize to help look for it. We have a couple of card draw options. Uh, we are running some other interesting strats to do this kind of stuff, but Sahin is one of the trickier cards to grab, and it's not the market card because I find it it's more important to get the Eternity Core and get set up for other things than to play the Sahin out of the market and just let everyone know exactly what you're doing, since uh, the 4-drop that you should be playing is Core first, then Sahin, rather than Sahin first, get Sahin removed, play a Core, be sad. So uh, it's the other way around, and that's why the market is structured in this way. We have the one key piece that we need to get out of the market, and the one key piece that's in our deck, but is also just a good mid-range unit that we can play in a pinch if we don't get the combo. However, uh, I've been able to execute on this combo pretty efficiently. Like, I would say, like... 85-90% of the time. It's really not been that hard to do. Uh, we've been able to accomplish it pretty much every time. Sometimes we do not live, and there are reasons for that that we will talk about, but uh, I would say that overall it's been very, very good at doing that. Uh, other things that we have, it, we really do want relics, so we have a couple of other ways to accomplish that. Severin the Mad Mage plays random rings while also being an excellent mid-range unit, so that's relics for us. And Call for Aid plays a Power Stone, draws a card, and gains a health. We're not playing that many Call for Aids, and we're not playing any of the Mesmerizing Moth, the three cost that generates an Ancient Bobble, and both of those are just for reasons of overall power level. We're trying to keep the deck pretty um, beefy and generally capable of handling itself while still getting to the combo. So that's uh, uh, more justifications for why it is that we're doing things the way we're doing it. Okay, everything else in the deck is uh, falls into two camps. First, pledge mid-range units, which are very, very powerful on their own. Island of the Rising Storm, Moonstone Vanguard, and Severin, all of which do lots and lots of beady things, play pretty well with uh, our uh, Eternity Core, and are just generally strong, and ramp. 
We have Initiate of the Sands, Trailmaker, Aurelian Merchant, and we have Bear Guard Bayonet with our 12 pledge units to give us Aurelian Merchants that actually have attack, that's important for Martyr's Chains, as well as to give Overwhelm to certain units, allowing us to push through for lethal at certain times. Uh, we also use Savagery for this goal in addition to giving us a little bit more interaction. Okay, that's the basics of the list. We'll show a little bit about how it plays overall. Uh, we do run strategizes to put Martyr's Chains back on the bottom, as well as to dig for Sahins. We tend to do a lot of digging for Sahin, play crests, play strategize, play as much as we can to get through it. The market consists of a Xenon Temple to use Xenon Augury to get Sahin, as well as Xenon Initiation to kill stuff. We have our Scorpion Wasp to handle Vargo the Bear, who is one of the bigger threats to this deck. Uh, this is a deck that really, really wants to basically play the Martyr's Chains and get all of the immediate value out of it, and if we're playing against a Vargo style deck, then Vargo can typically just harsh rule and blow everything up and since it doesn't die to uh, Martyr's Chains, it's a pretty tough card to get rid of. So unfortunately, uh, if we We'd come up with this deck a season earlier, I think we'd have been <laughs> in even better shape. An infinite hourglass gives our units endurance, thus freeing them from any permafrost type effects or other stuns, and it's just a decent relic for a cheap relic option to use to trigger Sahin. So if you've already got a lot of power and you just want something interesting to kill Sah to sacrifice to Sahin, or if you want to make sure that all of your units are capable of blocking, which is very important against any sort of matchup that includes madness as an option. Uh, those are really good cards to be keeping an eye on. Infinite Hourglass also allows you to play the same game that everybody else is playing, which is uh, how to beat Anaya Huru. Uh, and we generally do want to have uh, unstunnability be one of our key factors in the market for that reason. We run Xenon Banner to fix for power and make sure that we can get some of these other keys. And basically every card is a time card, and every merchant can fetch all of the cards in our market. So we never have to worry about that particular part of the deck. Okay, that's everything. Let's run into some games. Uh, this is a really fun list. Like, Martyr's Chains is not a fun card, but it's really fun to surprise people with Martyr's Chains out of three colors. So I am very, very happy to just go ahead and run in with it. And uh, let's uh, go ahead and show it off. And yeah, we'll get into some cool games. See you in just a second. All right, here we are up against Sweaty Wizard. And uh, yeah, as far as things go, we got a Pledge Card, a Trailmaker, and a Aurelian Merchant. These are three of the things that we need. Ramp, uh, merchants and pledges. Uh, both when we have all three of these, we don't necessarily need to have Sahin, and the crests here help us dig for it. So let's go ahead and keep this, and we'll see if we can work with it. So the rest of this hand, or the basic plan here, is we need to find Sahin. Uh, if we can get Sahin out, then everything else should come together. But we're gonna play a merchant into Eternity Core, and we're gonna dig with our crests and try and find our four drop. Uh, more merchants certainly don't hurt, but I think here, once again, basically anything that isn't Sahin goes to the bottom, because we've already got all the other key parts of this deck, and Trailmaker is really like putting it all together. So Trailmaker here, go ahead and grab a Primal, and Crest of Cunning, Finds us nothing. We're fine with having Martyr's Chains. The 10 merchants allow us to easily trade it in. We've also got Strategize to put it on the bottom. So having a card that we can't play is not that big a deal here. We can just do this. And then do this. Dig a little deeper. Uh, Shadow Sigil's nice. I might actually play Moonstone Vanguard over Eternity Core here since I'm already close to seven. Uh, it's kind of a tough sell. I would say that Eternity Core is more important here and that's probably what we're going to go after. Opponent's playing a pledge deck. Might even be my pledge deck. Seeing some Bear Guard Bayonets in there though, so it's quite possible it's not. Oh, we got a Bear Guard Bayonet of our own. Not bad. Uh, yeah, let's play that on this. I'm going to use the Crest of Cunning just to see if we can find a Sahin. That's not a card we want. I'm going to go ahead and play Eternity Core here. We'll play Moonstone Vanguard next turn. It doesn't look like we're in a hurry as far as things go. Like, the main thing we have to worry about is Ailin, but Ailin is not coming out for at least one more turn, so we've got a little bit of time to play around. And plus, we might get our hands on something cool, like, say, a Savagery, which we can then use to play Moonstone Vanguard and start having a lot of fun. Okay, Glass Opera would be lovely to kill, but I can't do it. I'm guessing that came out of the Glass Hopper, so Call for Aid here draws us a card. Happy to do that. Found our Sahin, finally. 
So we can play down Moonstone Vanguard to get something on board, and we're ready to rock and roll as far as power goes. In addition, I've actually got an Aurelian Merchant, so even if I don't draw power, I can trade in for power and get the things I want. Ooh, although, there will be an Aegis. So it's not going to be perfect. That's a 9-9. Nine, nine. No blocks there. It's a big guy. But I think we'll be okay. So Sahin? The treasures of ancient kings. We're going to sacrifice our Power Stone. Immediately place Martyr's Chains. There's no way I can play anything else. Bearguard Bayonet allows us to sacrifice here, but the question is, what do we want to sacrifice? By Aurelian Merchant, I can also grab stuff, but I think that's definitely not what we want to do. Uh, I'd say here we probably just want to kill the ramp and make sure we don't get silenced. So let's go ahead and go with another point on Aurelian Merchant to give us a better blocker. And kill the Trailmaker. Okay, I could attack here to draw a card, but it's better to just wait for the 10-10. We're going to have a nice defensive board with a lot of good units. We're not going to worry about Sack the City or Wisdom of the Elders from Korovia Palace. We have our 10-10 to attack with, and that's all we need. Sweaty Wizard, in the meantime, is back down to 5. Not going to be playing into uh, Ailin anytime soon, which is very good for us. Uh, we have plenty of things to play with, and we can even make more Martyr's Chains if we choose to. Since this deck doesn't play with Madness or any kind of interesting tricks, that'll probably be worth it. Uh, we can just get rid of the Power Stone, and then we have double double setup, road. which will be great. Okay, Silver and Courier is not really a big thing. We don't care about that too much. Savagery kills Sahin, so that means we can't double Martyr's Chains. But that's not the end of the world. Okay. Amber Waste down here, kills that, no problem. Easy peasy. Go ahead and attack in, get the four here. Found a crest, that's awesome. From here I can use Aurelian Merchant to grab a Xenon Temple, which I think I'd really like. And we can use that to dig up anything else we might want. Probably a Sephir and the Mad Mage seems like a good idea. Let's play a game. What did I get? I got an Emerald Ring. Useful. Helps us get our Aurelian Merchants up if we get some sort of harsh roll effect. Which at this point is about the only hope that our opponent has. So yeah, we got the big board, we got the lots of power. We uh, do have an Aegis unit that we have to deal with that I would rather be dealing with otherwise. We were playing Varus in this deck for a while to gain life, but it ended up being a little bit too non-focused. I really liked the life gain aspect of it, but it just wasn't working out. Okay, I'm interested in seeing what this is going to be. I'm not sure it can be much more than drawing a card. Let's go ahead and block with both Severin and this guy just in case it's something else. But gaining 5 life and not losing anything should be the key. Alright, looks like poor Sev's gonna take a little bit of a walk here. Or it's possible our opponent just distributed the power to something else. That looks like another Moonstone Vanguard. Oh, a Cerso, the Great Glutton. That's interesting. So Xenon Initiation can give something killer. I don't really have anything to, like really beat Cerso. So we gotta figure out what we want to do about that. Currently I'm actually looking pretty good. Another Severin will get us like some toys. Oh, you know what? If I had actually played a plus one plus one weapon on a good unit, that might have been better. I also should be doing this twice. Oh, I got another Emerald Ring. That's beautiful. So now if I attack for 20, draw my card, go for the sight. Should have gone for the sight with everything, actually. That was a mistake. But we'll get that block there. And then this will turn into a 4-4. Four four. Not sure if that was worth it, but it sure was fun. Let's go ahead and play our Cobalt Waystone, protect our face, and kill this Glasshopper. Svetcha will come out. I think we're okay with that. We stole a Glasshopper. That's really fun. Everything's looking pretty good here. 
you will suffer for what you have done. Yeah, if I'd attacked with everything, I think we'd have had a better result, but that's okay. We're getting pretty close to just uh, having it all. Scare here trades. I don't know. We could trade Hojin's health. I don't really need the initiate here, so I'm not going to go for it. Emerald Ring can make bad things happen. I think the one I'm most excited about is just attacking with a very, very large Overwhelm nonsense monster. Even if Cerso blocks, like, it's not going to be perfect. Because it's got too many weapons on it. <laughs> And then we'll play a world joiner. And I think life will get pretty good after that. 36, 100. That looks like a good stat line to me. I think that's a, that's probably the most unique unit I've played in a while. It's a very unusual stat line. <laughs> pretty hard to get a 36, 100 in this game. Oh, Predator's Instinct. So Cersei's actually going to get some value. Uh, trade in. Does get you some worth here. And you got your 10-10. The suffering fills us. Um, okay, well, Cerso's still kind of holding us, but not very strongly. I don't have enough units to kill them here, so the thing I need to do here is make sure that I have more big units later on so that I can actually push through for the remaining 7 damage. If I attack here, I don't get the 7 damage and I lose something to Cerso. I'd rather stay put and uh, figure something out later. We'll double everything up. Cerso can actually attack me here, which is not great. Mostly what I need right now is power. But we're pretty on top of it. I should never have swapped Hojin. We've actually got a lot of random things going on here. Where Hojin's not actually being good for us. Unfortunate there. Cerso is going to do a lot of damage here. And there's not much I can do about that. So that's 10. Savagery is enough. For sure. All we got to do is Savagery Severin. Kill Svetcha. And that's game. And that's why we have Savagery in the deck. <laughs> Because <laughs> that got close to actually being a route. <laughs> Alright, here we are against Ray Blackfire. Uh, looking at our starter, I got a Moonstone Vanguard, which is awesome. I got a Great Valley Smuggler, which is awesome. Martyr's Chains is not a great card to have in the opening hand, but we can trade it out with the Smuggler, so I think we're okay. This is going to be pretty simple. We are going to Crest, we're going to play a Feln, we're going to play a Great Valley, and get... Uh, everything we need and from there hopefully we'll draw Governor Sahin. If we don't then we've still got some other things that we can play with. So, A little bit of shadow there. If you're looking for a popper version of this list, oh goodness 142. You can run Tunneling Gargantuan in the place of Ailin and that'll reduce the amount of legendaries that you need by four which is generally a pretty good idea. Okay, Moonstone Medgard here. So, we've got Ebon Dune. That's good stuff. Um, Crest of Cunning here Send a gets us places. Found Zaheen. That's really good. Call for Aid seems useful in case like our Eternity Core goes away. I don't think it's super important here, but could potentially be something we want. I kind of want to play Great Valley Smuggler since I've got the Felm Banner. I think I need a power here, undepleted power if at all possible, because uh, we aren't going to be able to stick Ebon Dune Smuggler. It's probably going to jump in front of Rip Knife Assassin. So it would be very good to have a fourth power to play our uh, Eternity Core. So if we don't have that, then we have to wait a whole other turn to do our other things. Okay. I think in this case I'm going to play Great Valley Smuggler. I'm going to trade Martyr's Chains for the core. 
and we'll set up the core and we'll set up Sahin for later. Oh, it's grabbing Aurelian Merchant. This could be like a Passage of Eons, some sort of attachment destruction. General problem of this deck is that we do have to deal with basically every merchant ever having attachment destruction, but it's not the end of the world if that happens. Want to attack for four here? Get that damage in. Seems like a reasonable use of our time. We can follow that up with a Great Valley Smuggler for a power. And then an Ebon Dude Smuggler for the remainder. I've actually got six power right now, so if I want to play Sahin this turn, I can. But it would probably be a mistake. That looks like it might be a Vara, something along those lines. A lot of Warcry is happening here, but that's going to be okay, because we are going to be the bigger deck by far. Found a Martyr's Chains. Not super important here. So it's definitely going to be a Crest of Mystery there. Don't need that. Could attack for four here, but it seems like there's something happening, so we'll stay put. And Great Valley Smuggler and Ebon Dune can both be played this turn if I want to, which I think would not be a terrible idea. Getting like a Xenon Temple here could be very strong. Or a Xenon Banner. I do need the Xenon Banner for sure, so let's go with that, and then probably attack for four. I was saying I wasn't gonna, but actually I think I want to see whatever removal I, my opponent's got. Nothing happening there. So Ebon Dune doesn't have to trade for anything. Trust in the shadow. Oh, our opponent's doing a little relic action. We'll see if their relic is as good as ours. <laughs> uh... So I still kind of want to play Moonstone Vanguard, which is making me not want to play Ebon Dune Smuggler right now. This 2-2 deadly unit is going to be... whatever. It's not the end of the world if it's in or out. I think I'm okay with just allowing it to exist. So what's the relic? Azendil's Gift is a possibility? Be a pretty steep investment, though. Oh, it was the Winter Crown! Ha! Ah. Okay, well, I'm not going to play Ebon Dune here, I think. I've already got enough stuff. We'll just play Sahin. The treasures of ancient kings. Sack our relic. Play our Xenon banner. Kill the Aurelian merchant. Alright. So Sahin's dead. But Sahin has done the damage that Sahin has needed to do. Um, like, the only thing that... The only remaining value that Sahin has to me is if I play Severin, and then I can, like, double the Martyr's Chains effect. But I am quite happy with what I got, so... No major worries there. That might be Attachment Destruction. Could be, like, a Disjunction or something. Currently got seven. I think killing that's pretty important. Let's attack for eight. So if it is a attachment destruction card, it's probably Passage of Eons. I don't have anything that solves for that at the moment. And I definitely don't want to do anything to like I don't want to play anything else into Passage of Eons right now. We've got an 8-8, Passage of Eons like is just really too slow. We should just win if my opponent has Passage of Eons, and if it's disjunction, same thing. Like, you can't kill Martyr's Chains and still get away with whatever you're doing on board. So it's fine. We can just jump in with Ebon Dune. Moonstone Vanguard gets us card draw if we want it. Xenon Temple is going to be the best way to activate that whenever possible. But we've got lethal, so it doesn't matter. Martyr's Chains! <laughs> good, good stuff. Alright, here we are up against Black Ice, and looking at our setup, we're looking okay. I got Crest Cunning, Cobalt Waystone, Trailmaker, Bear Guard. Um, overall, I'm pretty strong on this. It's missing time and a pledge. And I think those two things together, combined with Bear Guard Bayonet, make it a pretty bad hand, so we'll probably toss that one. Okay, this is much better. 
Not only did we get a pledge, but we got Governor Sahin, so there's really nothing to be unhappy about. Um, I get to play Ailin as a pledge, which is always awesome. Then we can go straight into Crest of Wisdom. I don't have to play Trailmaker immediately because I'm not looking for four drops. Uh, I'm looking for Governor Sahin to play on seven. We want to hold Sahin as much as possible. Another nice part about Sahin is that he is a unit, which means that he cannot be sabotaged or tossed out of the hand, and most of your relics are not going to be in hand the turn that you play them, so there's a lot to work with there. Ooh, Severin. Severin actually means that we don't have to find a merchant here. We can just play Trailmaker into Bear Guard Bayonet, or Never stop. Never break. <laughs> some other shenanigans if we choose to. This will do the trick. Already got time, already got triple blue. Don't need double shadow. Might as well fix time, I guess. But it doesn't actually matter here. And Trailmaker stays in the way. We can just stay put here, though. Severin seems great. I could block the Hojin, but I don't think taking damage from the Hojin is generally a problem. Oh, well. Now it makes perfect sense to block the Hojin, because there's nothing else happening, so it's just four damage at us. Oh, never mind. Our opponent has power, too. And Bear Guard Bayonets. My, it's a party. Wow. That was a heck of an opener, huh? I'm impressed. Well, no blocks there. Hopefully they can't do that well with the rest of their hand. Like, 12 damage is the least we want to take at the moment. I think Moonstone Vanguard might even be better than Severin here. Gotta think about this. If I find undepleted power, then Severin. Otherwise, Moonstone Vanguard has got to be the, co the correct choice. I'm worried about Vanquisher's Blade and... Uh, other options. Oh, you gotta find a tower in here too, huh? Boy! This sure was a deck. It might be a wee disconnected. We've been having some connection issues, so that could also be the possibility, but I'm guessing that we're gonna be okay. We'll, we'll find out in a second. Okay. No cool. So that gets us some stuff. Let's go ahead and say, since I have undepleted power here, now, I still want to play it on 7, right? So, I think Vanguard is actually the correct case here. And then we just play Crest of Cunning. We'll play Severin next turn to try and get some power going. We'll chump block as much as possible. And we won't die to Bearguard Bayonets. Oh, that was a bad Levitate. That Levitate actually could have uh, done like a ton of damage there. That would have been 4 or 5 at my face, and then I wouldn't have had to block the 4-3, so... But now, like, he can't ramp, so I just block the Hojin, probably? Never stop. Never break. <laughs> A lot of Hojins here. Okay, well, we'll block there for sure. Gain the five. No escape. No escape. Okay, yeah, there was a lot of stuff happening there, but I'm actually not in as much trouble as I was last turn. Uh, we'll play the Severin. Gets us a Cobalt Ring, which is not the worst. I don't really want to discard anything this turn. I want to play Blockers. Severin, number two... I think I'm okay without a Severin number two. I'm probably looking for something along the lines of an Eyelin at this point. Got Blockers. The Hojins are out in force. Line Breaker Shield gets pretty good ramp. And enough ramp to actually, like, beef the Hojins up a bit. I don't really want to go to... Like, I want to have at least 7 power here. So I need to keep 1 Trailmaker. I think I'm willing to take 6 to do that. I don't think this deck has much left in the tank, since it's spent a lot of it on Hojins. There's the possibility that something bad is going to happen here, but I think we're going to be okay. Horvath Palace is coming down eventually. I would definitely bet on it. The shadow has come for you. I don't care about Hojin as much as I care about that Border Scout. The treasures of ancient... So we're going to sacrifice here, play our Waystone, kill the Border Scout. 
I've got chumps and that Hojin doesn't have overwhelm, so we got a little bit of time to find something to kill the Hojin with, but we did get the Border Scout out, um, and we're big enough that we aren't going to die to withstand, which is the other thing that would be pretty scary here. At this point, Corvette Palace might actually be used to uh, draw cards, which is basically exactly where I want them. Great Valley can get Xenon Temple. Welcome. I feel so inclined. Not at all surprised to see Corvette Palace here. But a 7 8 is not a threat at all. Okay. So. Yeah, definitely just double block. There's no other tricks coming down the pipes. The Great Valley Smuggler can get a Xenon Killer effect to kill the Winchest Merchant. At that point, we kill Corvette Palace and we win. Because this deck doesn't have any reach, with the exception of Ailin, and Ailin is just not going to happen here. So there we go. Opponent's no no slow play did a little bit, but I think we found uh, the key that we were looking for against two Roostuffs. So, not feeling too bad about that. Huh. It's one of my lists, I think, with the Linebreaker shield. Okay, so I can just play the power here. Like, I don't have to go too crazy. But I actually would prefer to have a Xenon Temple, because that gets me a search next turn, so I get a little bit more value out of it than I would normally. Uh, let's go ahead and play that on the 4-4, four because four, that's what I get the best at effect out of. Obviously, we don't want them doing Wisdom to draw cards, so let's just kill that. And now our opponent's on one card a turn. And we have our Martyr's Chains, so we are, you know, pretty stacked. It's going to be hard to win this one. Enforcer's a good card. Uh, this one actually helps them quite a bit. Combined with Corvette Palace, it could potentially get us into some trouble. I'm going to go ahead and Xenon Augury here, of course. Uh, strategize seems reasonable. Power's also good. Yeah, let's do Amber Waystone. Just kill the 3-3. Three, three. All right, rather than try and find like a scorpion wasp with Evan Dune. When every power card is a sleigh and every unit is too big to possibly be dealt with, it turns out that your deck is pretty good. So, <laughs> Martyr's Chains, it's rude. Ah, Moonstone Vanguard, lovely. So, Scare swaps nothing. I guess we might as well swap something. Swing in for everything. And that's the round! Very good stuff. <laughs> okay. Good, good stuff. Alright, that does it for today's list. Uh, I don't have too many notes on this one. There are a lot of numbers that we're still tweaking around with. Uh, there are probably ways to make this deck more competitive, so if you want to find the particular way to break it, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping it's fairly short-lived. Regardless, um, we are feeling pretty set. Uh, the one thing that I would say is that if you want to make this deck cheaper, uh, it's only got eight legendaries in it, but if you don't feel that Island the Rising Storm is right for you, you can definitely use Tunneling Gargantuan, which is a card that is, uh, yeah, like an uncommon. It actually is much more effective than Ailin when you are ahead. The main reason that we are using Ailin instead of Tunneling Gargantua is because Ailin is more effective when you are behind. If your opponent actually pulls out those boars and does like the entire like anti relic combo. Uh, I want something where if I don't have relics, I'm still going to have a good chance of winning the game. But Tumbling Gargantua is really, really fun, and I actually really enjoyed it while I was playing it in this list. It's just that uh, it doesn't quite have the same kick if you are uh, winning, or if you are losing as if you are winning. So um, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been another Eternal Bruise. We will have more of them. Homecoming is full of good stuff, and the meta has been very exciting lately. So we hope that sticks around, and we will see you next time with more Eternal Bruise. Cheers, everyone. Bye.